Welcome to the Mentor Series Summary Video on Motivating Learners and Leading Teams. Meet Jim. Jim feels fulfilled and is extraordinarily motivated in his current rotation. But it hasn't always been that way. Two months ago, he looked like this. And one month ago, he looked like this. So what changed? Well, this is Dr. Lucia, Jim's current attending. Dr. Lucia is very intentional about how she builds the learning environment and how she works hard to optimize her students' motivation. To do this, she pulls from four key theories. The first is self-determination theory, which promotes intrinsic motivation by fostering the three basic psychosocial needs, autonomy, competence, and relatedness. To start, Dr. Lucia does not micromanage Jim's every decision. She wants him to think and act for himself. This means Jim no longer feels like a puppet of his attending. Instead, he feels empowered to spread his wings and fly. This sense of autonomy makes Jim want to take ownership and invest more in his patients. Dr. Lucia also builds Jim's competence. She does this by lauding his specific strengths and by giving targeted teaching and feedback in his weaknesses. Importantly, Jim also feels a sense of belonging to his attending and his team members. Each day, they intentionally talk about what's going on in their lives outside the hospital, whether it's their fitness goals, their family, or even what shows they're streaming. These simple acts of bonding, combined with positive and encouraging statements, forge a sense of relatedness. And by fostering autonomy, competence, and relatedness, Dr. Lucia has helped Jim become intrinsically motivated once again. Something else remarkable has happened to Jim, too. He no longer feels the overwhelming pressure of performance. In the past, he felt like rounding was akin to bicycling on a tightrope over the Niagara Falls. Inevitably, he would make a mistake, lose his balance, and fall into the waters of insecurity and inadequacy. But Dr. Lucia pulls on the strengths of a second theory, goal orientation theory, to squash this negative mindset. Now when Jim makes a mistake and fails, he gets back up, dusts himself off, and tries again. He no longer sees each day as a performance. Rather, he views each step, no matter the outcome, as getting him one step closer to mastery. This perspective shift is no accident. It is due to Dr. Lucia purposefully promoting tenets of the growth mindset to build resilience and fulfillment in her learners. She does this by embracing imperfections, telling stories of her own failures and current struggles, rewarding actions rather than results, and celebrating the growth of her learners. And because of this, Jim recognizes that his abilities and his outcomes are not fixed. They can grow incrementally with his effort. This means Jim is no longer crippled by a fear of failure. Instead, he is willing to try new things. He seeks challenges and he feels more fulfilled. We can see that building the team on the foundations of self-determination theory and goal orientation theory create an environment and culture that is positive, safe, inspiring, and fulfilling. But what about motivating our learners for those small decisions during the day? Like wanting to learn how to do a paracentesis or not. In these moments, Dr. Lucia pulls from two additional theories, Expectancy value theory and social cognitive theory. Expectancy value theory tells us that learners choose to do a task based on how valuable it seems. To enhance the perceived value of a task, Dr. Lucia tries to optimize interest, perceived utility, and opportunity cost. She maximizes interest and perceived utility by emphasizing how a task is relevant for Jim's patients and his goals. She optimizes opportunity cost by being mindful of when she introduces a task. Dr. Lucia recognizes that trying to teach during a time crunch can make teaching seem destructive. So she stays aware of her team's workflow and daily priorities. She will never make Jim choose between learning to do a paracentesis or going home to see his lovely family. Expectancy value theory also states that if someone believes they will be successful, this can promote engagement and even predict their future success. This belief, called someone's expectancy of success, is closely linked to a concept from social cognitive theory termed self-efficacy. Self-efficacy can be thought of as someone's confidence in a particular domain. And if we increase self-efficacy in a certain task, this can increase their expectancy of success, which means they may reach higher future achievements. The problem, though, is self-efficacy can be fragile. It can fluctuate considerably based off our circumstances and our perspectives. Two ways to improve self-efficacy are by promoting optimism and giving targeted feedback. For example, Jim's last team had a contagious pessimism that spread through them like wildfire, damaging their self-efficacy. But now, Dr. Lucia's seeds of optimism have been planted, and they've increased Jim's self-efficacy in all domains. 
In addition to promoting optimism, Dr. Lucia builds Jim's self-efficacy in a similar way to how she improves his competence, by giving targeted teaching and feedback towards his weaknesses and positively reinforcing those things he does well. In summary, because of Dr. Lucia's intentionality, Jim is more intrinsically motivated and seeks out challenges at work. He's also happier and more fulfilled. We can learn from Dr. Lucia by fostering an environment that promotes autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Building the growth mindset, optimizing task value, and intentionally bolstering self-efficacy. Happy teaching!